in Scripture. And I wish we could just stand up again for a moment while we read out of the book of Exodus and the fourth chapter of the book in the book of Exodus. I'd like to read first to the eighth verse. And Moses answered and said, But they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared unto thee. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprosy as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was returned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken unto the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, the unchanging, unfailing God remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And thou never changes, and we're so grateful for that. Now bless thy word and the reading of thy word to our hearts. And may we have faith to believe thee. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. You be seated. <clears throat> now you're one of the nicest audiences I ever spoke to. And I don't say that just to be saying it. It's true. And now I, I want to kind of take my time a little tonight and set this scene. So the purpose of doing this, I'm here to help you. And if I can help you or do something for you, well, make life's burdens a little easier for the Christian and bring the sinner to Christ, I'm a total failure for the kingdom of God. And I certainly want to be a blessing to God as he is our strength and life and health. Now, in teaching this, I want to, so that you will understand, see that some things comes up sometimes that's so mysterious that people doesn't catch it just right. And I think if we make it clear, plain, many people like, if we, if you don't explain divine healing, now sometimes, Brother Roy perhaps in a few minutes says it, but it's a, uh, People that doesn't know just how to hold on to divine healing, especially when the, the enemy comes, why, it, it, you can lose the battle. Very easy. Sometimes when people get sick after they pray for it, they think that's the battle. Oh, I lost it. That's the sign you got. And, and that, that's your sign. And if you don't know just, if you don't know your enemy, how can you do it in this 30 minutes each night for five little services and gone somewhere else? One of these days, I believe the Lord, while the great revival is kind of quieting across the nation, I've asked the Lord, if it be His will, let me get a tent, set it up, we don't have to rent anything, and, and have a morning service for the teaching with pastors and so forth, maybe from 10 to 12. In the afternoon, the instructions on healing, and then that night praying for the sick, day in and out for weeks. And then, not having Wednesday night or Sunday services to interfere, or just Sunday afternoon, so we won't interfere with the rest of the service. And that way, let everybody come that wishes to, pray for the sick, and if the devil uh, comes back or says anything, then we can come in and check it and see just what's taking place. You see. 
I think that would be a real blessing to the neighborhood, to the pastors and all of them that would know them. They believe this. They absolutely believe it or they wouldn't be preaching the Bible. Any Bible believer, a real Bible believer, punctuates every one of these promises of God with an amen. That's right. You can't believe it all. You say, well, I believe this, but I don't know about that. You've got the same interpreter that Eve had. She tried, he tried to interpret it to Eve. Oh, this is right and that's right. And, oh, that's truly that. But surely God, God said so. And every word, there's not one word or one phase of it can be misaccepted. Uh, mis, uh, if you don't accept it with all your heart, every bit of it, then you might as well not even start at all. See, remember, it was one little phrase of it just turned around that caused every sickness, every heartache, every death, everything, it caused it all. Just by misbelieving one little phrase caused all this, do you think just deliberately walking over one little phrase will get you back when people don't accept half of it sometimes and then call themselves Christians? Yes, See? Right. See, it's all right, every bit of it. It's just got to be put together, and there's only one can do it. That's the Holy Spirit by interpreting it by His own fulfilling what He said He'd do. That's the only way that I know of. Now, I'm going to speak tonight to you, or teach for, the, for a few minutes, on the subject of the, the voice of the sign. Did you know Moses said there, he will, They will not hear my voice. They will say, The Lord has appeared to you. God told him then, said, now, what's that in your hand? He said, well, it's a staff, rod. It's an old stick, shepherd's staff, like, said, throw it on the ground. And he did, and it turned to a serpent. Picked it up again, it was a serpent, or a stick again. Then he said, put your hand in your bosom. And he pulled it out, it's leprosy. Then he put it back again, pulled it out, it was healed. He said, now, if they won't believe the voice of the first sign, they will believe the voice of the second sign. Yes. Now, did you notice how God does that? The unchangeable God? Can I you go back in Arkansas about 15 years ago when the voice of the first sign promised the voice of the second sign? See, I said when that comes to pass, nobody will be able, unless he's just purely an unbeliever, because it will discern and know what he is and can tell him about it. So he's a, how many remembers pro, that being prophesied way back years ago that comes to meeting and said it would come to pass, the angel of the Lord said, it'll come to pass that you'll even know the secrets that's in their heart. How many know that that prophesied many years ago, think, when the first time was a movie? Now, our seed is at the back side of the desert of a runaway prophet. Moses knew that he had been raised up for, to deliver Israel. He had learned that from his mother. That she, he was a proper child and, and Jehoshaphat and, and her husband had prayed that God would send to deliver and there he was born in their family. A proper child. We know the story. And now, when he was raised up, he took the very same uh, way of training for the job as we would train a man today, right off the school, to the best of schools. If a man thought we had a, a call in his life, what would happen? They'd send him to Bob Jones or somewhere or some of the great schools and give him the highest type of education he could get. And that's the worst thing they could do. That's the worst thing that could be done. When a man says, I'm a Ph.D., L.L.D., that just puts him way away from God to me. Yes. See? God knows not all them things. There. God is simple, humble. Yes. God, uh, you know, you walk, they try to split an atom and, and try to tell how to do it, and then they walk over a blade of grass that they know nothing about. Yes. That's right. You just get yourself away from God with those things. Not as I'm supporting ignorance. Now, don't think that. But I'm trying to tell you that God is not known by education. God is known by faith. Faith, you know, God and that alone. And only faith, you only have to have something to base faith upon because it's not bottomless. That is his word. Amen. Moses went to school. They schooled him over and over again because no doubt they thought that he'd be a great military man in which history tells us he was. A great military man and was able to take the armies of Egypt and, and become the 
Pharaoh of Egypt and set the people free and sent them back to their homeland or let them take over Egypt. Now that's the, really the way that they thought would happen. And so they trained him and, and he could even teach the scholars some wisdom. He was really smart and educated, but that wasn't God's way of doing it. And when he found out it failed, he become bitter. And that's what the churches do today. When they find out their educational program, you can't educate God to, a man to God. You can't denominate him to God. God's got a way for him to come, and that's the only way God's going to recognize him. That's under the blood. Yeah. You can't do it by saying, yeah. we'll all be Methodists, we'll all be Baptists, we'll all be assemblies, we'll all be Church of God, we'll all be oneness, we'll be this. That will not satisfy God because his program that we've got to be born again and come under the blood. And so our, our schemes are only man-made and they've started out a failure and they'll always be a failure till we come back to God's way of doing it. That's the only way that God knows. It's under the blood. That's where he passes over. Many of you were down the other night or Sunday afternoon, I guess, down there when I preached on the token. Hold the token before you. How many was down there? Let's see your hand. I thought there's a group from here down there. And um, the token. That's the only thing God recognizes. And the token must be there or the covenant, even and all. Just the token and the token is the Holy Spirit. Now, we find that Moses, after doing this, he got bitter. So he just... Well, run, left Egypt and went out into the uh, deserts and there we find he married a, an Ethiopian girl, had a son named Gershom, and one day while he was uh, walking along the side of, of an old familiar path on the back side of the desert there, herding sheep, well, he was attracted uh, by a scene that was unusual. God is so unusual. He does things in such an unusual way. So contrary to science. So contrary to education. So contrary to sometimes man's theology. Just contrary to that. God does that just to show he's God. And to do that, he has to take somebody that knows none of these things so that he can work through that person. When Jesus come, why didn't he take care of this as the priest that was trained and ready for the job? He went out and he got men that couldn't even sign their name. Ignorant and unlearned, the Bible said they were. Because God takes nothing to make something out of it. See? And whenever you get to a place that you feel that you're nothing, then you're just about ready to come to God. When, when you get to a place that you know nothing, but you want to know something, then he'll reveal himself to you. Now... Notice when this unusual thing never had happened in the world as we know of, it was just the time of the Exodus. The Exodus was at hand. And when Exodus means being taken out, brought out, and now we find out that usually just at those a joint crossroads of an Exodus, the unusual begins to happen. I believe we're there again. I believe we're there. At the exodus of the bride to go meet the bridegroom. I believe the exodus is at hand. And this exodus to be brought from, from Egypt back to their homeland where they were promised to come was just at hand and God had to re-educate his man. Remember, Moses was educated for 40 years, getting all of his doctor's degree and everything, and it's taking God just another 40 years to take out of him what education is put in him. 40 years in the wilderness. What, taking it, take it out, it was to put it in. Then in the, all this great uh, thing was out of him, God appeared to him in a form of a burning bush. Now, I'll show you that it was out of him. Now, if not... Now, Moses, being a, a scientist, he would have went to take some of those leaves off of a tree and take them down to the laboratory and have them examined to see what kind of a chemical it was sprayed with that that tree could burn and not burn up. See, because now the Egyptians were smart, scientific people, more smarter in science than we are today. Proves that they could embalm a body that... Still looks natural today. We can't do that. Build a pyramid. We couldn't do that. See? The things that they had were far beyond our science today. 
And so Moses was trained in all the wisdom, so that made him a scientist. So you see, when he come in the presence of this bush, he knowed the bush had what he lacked. If we could only do that today. If we could only know the phenomena of God has got what we lack in our denominations. What our educational system lacks, God's got it in the phenomena of the presence of Christ. That's what we need. Now, we find out this exodus at hand. God met Moses and told him what was going to take place and give him two signs. And each sign had a voice, a voice of a sign. Every sign from God is followed by a voice. Every time God gives a true sign, there's a voice that follows it. When you see some kind of phenomena come along and watch it move and it don't change into something, then it never comes from God. See? God don't just show signs just to show He's God. There's a voice that follows that sign. Uh, by God's help, we'll find that in the scripture tonight and see if that's the truth. See? Here the burning bush was a sign to Moses. That was a sign. And it was given to, and he heard the voice from the bush. Now notice, God never changes his program. He never has to take his words back. His first decision is perfect. I can make a decision, I'll say, well, I, I was wrong. See, I'm a man. You can make one and you have to take it back. Science makes it and takes it back. Do you know that? Yeah. They can scientifically prove it to be right, and after a while they scientifically prove it's wrong. Yeah. But they won't admit theirs. They won't admit theirs. Now, a French scientist about 600 years ago or something like that, rolling a ball uh, at a certain speed around the globe, being the earth, or, or 200 years ago, I believe it was, or three, something like that. Anyhow, he scientifically proved by the raising of this ball at the speed, if, if someone would go the terrific speed of 30 miles an hour, anything traveling upon the earth at the speed of 30 miles an hour, gravitation loses hope to be taken off the earth. You think science goes back and recognizes that? No, they're going on and on and on. See? But ministers are always trying to refer back to what somebody else said, way back behind them, instead of what God said to you. Yeah. We're climbing the tree of faith. Yeah. See? And God never changes His program. You can rest solemnly on what God says the first time. He ever has to stay with that. He cannot, He cannot, and never did at any time change it. Because if he does, then he's, he's finite like we are. He makes mistakes. He has to apologize and go back. But he is the source of all wisdom. Yes. Source of all power. Infinite. Omnipresent. Omnipotent. Omnipotent. See, he's just, he's God. If he isn't all those things, then he isn't God. But he has to be that to be God. Now, God never did use some man-made program to honor him. Unless it just put it to disgrace. God always uses a single individual. Just one, never organization, never a denomination. He uses one single person because we differ all one from another. There was never two major prophets on the earth at one time. Never. He doesn't do it because he just speaks to that one. When that was gone, he raises another to speak at that time. Remember, that's always been his program. Now, we find out here the burning bush was a sign. It was given to attract the attention of Moses. Now, that's what God gives a sign for, is to attract the attention of the people. That's what a sign is for, to attract attention. You know, we go down through the scripture here as we teach it now for a few minutes. And find out if that isn't so, that he gives these signs to attract attention. And then when he gets the attention of the people, then the voice of the sign begins to speak. Jesus healed the sick to attract attention, see? Then when he began to preach, always it attracts attention. The burning bush was given to Moses to attract the runaway prophet's attention. 
And he turned aside to see what it was. Then the sign gave a voice. Amen. The sign itself gave a voice. Now, these voices and signs are to alert the people of God's word is just about ready to be vindicated. Always the sign is to attract attention to people. Now, many of you Bible readers are thinking now of different passages in the Bible. We're going to come to some of them. That when a sign is given, it attracts the attention of the people because God is getting ready to speak. He wants an audience. Well, somebody is going to listen to what he's going to say. See? Now, always does that. His word alerts them of uh, the, the sign is an alert to attract the attention of the people that the word is getting ready to speak. Now, notice, he is going to speak by his promised word, something that he said he's going to do. Notice, uh, I have heard and I remember my promise. I heard their cries in Egypt. I remember what I promised Abraham. See what he's going to do? He attracted his attention. Now he's got his word. He's going to give it to the prophet Moses because that was, is, and ever is his way of speaking. Amen. Amen. That's the way he does it at the beginning. That's the way he does it now. He ever does it the same. See, the word comes to the prophet, and Moses was the prophet, and now he had to prophesy that he was going to bring Israel up. and say how he was going to do it, but he was going to bring them out of Egypt. And then he had heard their cries and their groans and their prayers. They were only waiting for God. Uh, God was waiting on them. He had his prophet out there in the wilderness. But he was only waiting for the people to call him into action. I believe he's got the same thing today. Waiting for his church to call it on the scene so he can act. The promise of today is ready. But he's got to get the people to praying and groaning like they were down there. Then it'll come on the scene. Yes. The Moses was out in the wilderness holding there for 40 years. The people rejected the, the, sign, the thing he did down there. And, uh, killing the Egyptian. It wasn't God's way. So he put him out in the wilderness and, and re-educated him out to the phenomena. And now he's ready. And God said, I heard the groans. I've seen their groans, their taskmasters whipping them. And I remember my promise. Amen. See, Amen. he's ready to speak now. He's got everything in order. Now, he shows the phenomena that attracts the attention of the prophet. When the prophet got down there, he showed the phenomena because he was God's voice. Amen. How could a man pick up dust and throw it and say, Dust, saith the Lord, not a flea in the country in a couple hours, and then the, everything's crowded full of fleas. Not a fly, no word at all. And he says, Let there be fly. Yeah. And the first thing you know, a big old blow fly began to fly around, and they were gloating the people everywhere. Yeah. Who, what man could do that? It was God. Amen. Using that prophet, making his word a sign to give a call where he's going out of Egypt. Now, watch real close now. He is going to speak, so he has to attract the attention by a sign, and the sign voice is what he's going to say. His word, his promised word is going to be vindicated now. See, I made a promise that I would take him out by a strong hand. I would show my power in that land, whatever he's going to do. I made the promise to Abraham... Here he is ready to do it, so he gives a sign, a pillar of fire laying back in a burning bush. And he tells Moses, now you're going to be my mouthpiece, go on down there and I'll be with you. And when he got down there, then the promise, word, that he had promised was vindicated. That was the voice of the sign. Get it now? Notice, I have heard their groans, I remember my promise. God never changes. He always does it in the same way. The coming of a prophet is a sign that God is ready to speak. Did you not search the scriptures? 
See? The Bible says God said himself he did nothing until he revealed it to his prophet. That's right. Amen. He does it to them because it comes to him as his servants, you know. All right? The coming of a prophet is a sign that's overlooked by the people every time. They overlook it. They never get it somehow unless it's those who have got their eyes open to see it. Those who are elected to see it does see it. But the coming of a prophet was a sign that God is ready to speak because if God able to speak, the prophet wouldn't be on earth. I remember that. He wouldn't be on earth. Unless God was ready to speak, and that's the way He speaks us through those channels. Yes. The unchanging God never did do it any other way. Amen. Notice, this is always God's way of making His voice known to His people. He sends His prophet and gives a sign and then takes His voice that's been spoken before on His word and vindicates it. By this man, and they know that it's his voice because it's a promise word of the day. Oh, if people could only see that. If they could only stop just a moment and realize that, you see, there's no way to make them believe it. There's, there's not a way a man, God himself, can do it. Make the people believe it. They've got to believe it, and if there's nothing there to believe with, how can they believe? No matter what you do, the Bible said, though he had done so many miracles, yet they could not believe because Isaiah foresaw it. He said, they got ears and they can't hear, eyes and can't see. And yet he was perfectly the Messiah, done exactly what the Messiah said. And they said, this man just breaks up churches and he, we don't know whence he comes. See? Isn't that strange that they would do that? But the Bible said they would do it. And the Bible also said in this day they would do the same thing. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than of God. False accusers, incontinent, despisers of those that are good, having a form of godliness, but would deny the vindicated word, the power there, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and so forth, from such turn away. For this is the kind that organizes women's societies and goes house to house and leads silly women, laid away with divers lusts, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. See? Now, that's prophesied. And that's got to come to pass because it's thus saith the law. Notice, but their folly would be showed up. I have Jambers and Jambers in the last days. Now, always making known his voice to his people by his prophet sign. I'm talking about Moses. That's where I'm banking back. And then see where we're at. God's word is manifested. By the voice of the sign. Now, the sign that is promised for the day is done before the people, and then the written scripture comes forth is the voice of that sign. If it doesn't give a scriptural voice, then stay away from it. See? It's not God. Because God can't promise this for a day and say, oh, this is it. See? God cannot do that. God cannot promise something for one day and say, no, no, I I won't do that. That was for another day. What he promises, he must stay with it. And the real scriptural sign is the scriptural voice. Moses' sign that he saw was God in cosmic light. And then when he did that, and does anybody know the old Hebrew sign even before there was a Bible written? was a triangle shape or oval shape of a cosmic light. Exactly right, the Logos. Now, Dr. Lonsley has that in his Bible on the cover on the outside. Now, we notice that Moses was attracted by this sign, and this sign spoke to Moses with a scriptural voice. See? The sign attracted him, and then he said, I... Remember my promise. And I've come down to deliver them, and I'm going to use you for a mouthpiece. You go on down there. Moses made his excuses, but God sent him anyhow. Now, that's his way of interpreting his word. A prophet in the Scripture must first be a, a seer that's a vindicator. It must not be just any fellow come along and say, I got thus saith the Lord, and next and say, I see thus saith the Lord. 
Prophets are not hands laid on them and made prophets. Prophets are predestinated for the hour. The Bible tells when they'll come, what they'll be. Prophets are, are sent from God. They're offices of God that's been born. God told Jeremiah before you was even conceived in your mother's womb. I ordained you a prophet to the nation. Amen. They're just, that must be perfectly in the man. It's, a, it's not him, it's a gift from him. Moses was born a prophet. Jeremiah was born a prophet. Isaiah, a prophet. John the Baptist, a prophet. God has spoken of them. And what they say must be true. And the way that the people is to know whether they are true or not, what he says must be correct because what he's prophesying about is his credentials of his call from God when God vindicates what he says to be the truth. Now that's why I'm trying to say these things tonight so that you'll understand. Now if the Bible said over here, if there be one among you who's spiritual or a prophet, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in visions, speak to him through dreams. Then he says, if this prophet says anything, and it doesn't happen, then don't you believe it. Now, that's no more than good sense. But if what he says comes to pass, then hear, then you must fear him because he's with him. Now, we find out what Moses said, come to pass. Amen. See, that made him a vindicated seer. That was his credentials. Because what he said happened, he said, about this time tomorrow there will be fleas all over the ground. And there was. Amen. This time tomorrow there will be so and so. And there was. Amen. It was hit exactly on the dot. Not just a haphazard. So many men today, if you excuse this just for a minute, and I'm no judge or just passing a personal opinion. Many men has raised up good spirit-filled men. And they try, they go out, maybe the Lord give them a gift of prophecy. Now there's a million miles difference between a gift of prophecy and a prophet. A gift of prophecy must be judged by three before it could even be passed into the church. We know it's the same as speaking in tongues. It must go before three judges before it can even be given to the church. Now, we find out. Now, as these men go out sometime and then people begin to press upon them. Oh, brother, what will you say? See, he goes by impression. See? way he feels, well, the Lord will do that. Thus saith the Lord. That's a lie. See? You, you can't say, thus saith the Lord, until God in his own language has spoke to you and told you that. Then it's not you saying it. Not your impression. The Bible said that a prophet did that was going out presumptuously. That is, presuming. And presume is to adventure without authority. Amen. He's going up on his own. But when you see the man speaking... What's going to happen in the name of the Lord is happens day in and out, week in and out, month in and out, year in and out. Then you know that come from God. Yeah. See? That's God's credentials to the man that he is the interpreter of the written word for that day because Amen. God sent the man to do it. Right. Amen. If the church just only had some good sound teaching on these things, see? They'd understand. Only thing we get one little track and we run right wild with it. That's just take on that one thing and just make a hobby out of it. That's whatever ever denomination originated from. If Martin Luther would have went on into sanctification, okay. If the Wesleyan Methodists would have went on into the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the restoration of the gifts, it'd all been one big church of the Lord all the time. But they get that one little thing and prove it's right, and there they are. But they had to do it. The Bible said that's the way they would do it. And it has to be this way today. I hope that my class understands. Do you understand what I mean? Raise your hand. So, and understand. You must understand. Friend, this is your life. See? This is your life. Yes. His credentials is that God has vindicated this person to be a seer. Now, the English word of prophet just means a preacher. See? Anybody, ever preacher is a prophet. Because he's foretelling something. Uh, preaching the word under inspiration is called a prophet. But in the Old Testament, they were more than that. They were seers. They, they were men who told things that was coming to pass. 
And it happened. That gave him the right to be the, the interpreter of the word for that day because God took the word of that day and interpreted himself through that man. And that's what he come on the earth for. He's always a sign when a prophet comes to the earth. Just watch as we go through it and see if it isn't so. He always sends his prophet. When you see a prophet rise on the scene, look out. We're looking for one to come now, you know. And then when you see it, you just remember, it's something fixing to happen. This is his credentials. Then God interprets his word by him and through him. Numbers 12, 6 tells that. And remember, the entire Bible was wrote by the prophets. Why? The word of the Lord came to him after they was vindicated. Prophets like Jasher and so them that was thrown out and many prophets that never went on. But God has a way of stirring his word when it's true. God's got to judge the world by something. The Catholic people here, they say he's going to judge him, judge the world by the church. If that's right, then what church? If you say the Catholic church, which the Roman, Greek, or what? See? They're all broke to pieces. He's going to judge it by the Baptist church. Now what about the Methodist church? See? See, he can't do that. There's too much confusion. People wouldn't know where they're at. But he said in the Bible, if you don't know what he's going to judge the, the people by, he's going to judge the world by Jesus Christ. And he is the word. The Bible then is what he'll judge by. Vindicated word. That's God's way of judging is the Bible. So no matter what any creed or denomination says, you stay right in that Bible because it is Christ. St. John, the first chapter, tells us that. Notice now, the Bible was written by the prophet. We see that it says that the man of old and moved by the Holy Ghost wrote the Bible. And Hebrews 1, it says, God in sundry times and divers manners spake to the fathers by the prophet. In this last day through his son, Jesus Christ. See? Because he was the manifestation of all the word of the prophet, and he was the fullness of the word. The word was in him. All the word. He was Emmanuel, God manifested in flesh. God come down in the form of the Holy Spirit, two wings like a dove, settling down and went up on him saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am pleased to dwell in. Now the King James there says, in whom I'm pleased to dwell. What difference does it make? In whom I'm pleased to dwell or who I'm pleased to dwell in? See? In whom I'm pleased to dwell. There was God in man. Heaven and earth come together. God and man united. The greatest hour to that time there was on the earth. There ever had been. Notice the pillar of fire, sign, and then the voice of the sign spoke. See? The pillar sign of the voice was there ready to speak. The sign only showed that the voice was ready to speak. Get the idea? The sign shows God's voice is ready to speak. And when God shows a sign, as he is in the last days, you don't, you look around, look at, look at the immoral of the people today. That's God's sign. When you see people getting like this, look what they're going to. He said they get worse and worse. They, they are doing it. See? That, that immoral sign. All right? There's all kinds of signs. Signs in the heavens above. Fearful sights. Flying saucers. The Pentagon looks at them. Don't know what they are. All kinds of signs. Sea roar. Waves. Perplexed of time. Distress between the nations. All these things. Earthquakes in diverse places. Man running to and fro. Knowledge increasing. All these other things that he said. Great turmoil, how the Christ will be put out of his church in the last days, in the Lady of the Age. We got it. All these things are God speaking signs. And then what's the matter is knowing God sent someone on the scene. Something on the scene to vindicate that and to take the scripture that spoke of for the day and to manifest it. And that's the credentials of it. Let's see this. The sign. The pillar of fire as soon as a the sign come up there, it was a, that was the sign that the voice was ready to speak. And we see the sign of the end. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Amen. The sign of the end. How many believe that say amen? amen? Then the voice is ready to speak. Amen. The voice is ready to speak because we see the sign. 
The pillar of fire was there to say that the voice was ready to speak. Also, it must be a scriptural sign. It must be a scriptural vindication of the word that's promised for that day. How perfect is God's order at each time? Now listen, let's go back just a moment. Your little thought. In the Old Testament, before the Bible was written, just had the scrolls and so forth that had been put together, like the book of Isaiah's writing, the book of so and so's writing, the prophets. Now, if a man come up with something that he had dreamed a dream or he was a prophet, the first thing they take him down to the temple, to the Urim Thundam. The ministers here, and many of you brethren out there know what the Urim Thundam was. It was it was the breastplate of Aaron. They hung it up on a post in the temple, and I noticed. When that man began to speak, and if whatever he said, if it wasn't true, that light stood still. It was nothing. But what he said, if it was true, then a conglomeration of light, like a rainbow, began to flash, and that was called the Urim Thundam. Brothers know that? Sure. Sure, that is Urim Thundam. What was it? The sign, no matter how it sounded, the sign must be given with the voice. Amen. See, the sign comes and then the voice. There must be that or the voice is not recognized. Right. No matter what the voice said, how real it sounds, if that human thunder didn't declare it, then it wasn't right. And any kind of sign that showed today, I know God can do things that's not wrote in the Bible, but to me we're living in the hour that we should be very careful. The Yerma Thundam today is God's Bible. That shows what's supposed to take place today. When they think we got to build a bigger organization, we got to go to the ecumenical council, that's a sign of unity. To me, it's the sign of the Antichrist. That's exactly what the Bible spoke of. Sure, it's not a scriptural sign, only on the other side. It lets the believer know which way it's headed. The Urim, the Thundam is God's word. And what he said would take place in the last days, that's it. Exactly what's got to flesh is it's a wrong sound. Man said, well, I got a PhD, LLD, I was made so-and-so, I'm doctor so-and-so. That's no Bible sign. No, no, well, I'm the head of so-and-so, I'm a district man, I'm, I'm the bishop, I'm, I don't care what you are. There's only one sign we look for, and that's the vindicated word of God when it's trust, say it's the Lord. That's the voice of the sign. God's word first. When the Urim of Thundam spoke, they said, that's right. When them lights flashed, the sign was there, the voice is true. Notice how, how people have made that of a non-effect today by their traditions. Jesus Christ said in his last commission to his church in Mark 16, after his resurrection, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. If that don't flash on the urim of thunder of your life, there's something wrong. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues. If they should take up a serpent or drink, that it thing to it and harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. And man with smart education to them has not denied that thing. How can the flesh on God's ear my son when he said, These times shall follow them that believe? God's word in its entirety is true. So the Urimah Thundam's got to flash with the sign. If the sign going out, I don't care what he's doing. If it's not according, doing according to that word, then there's something wrong. Yes. I don't care what he does. There's something wrong. It's got to come to the truth. Didn't Jesus tell us in Matthew 24, 24, the two spirits of these close to the last days that would deceive the very elect if possible? Now put on your thinking cap. Put on your armor of God. Listen for just a minute. Notice, we've got to come exactly the way he said to it. Yes. Just the way God said to it, that's the way we've got to do it. What Jesus said was going to happen, that's what's going to happen. Yes. If he said these signs, they said that was just for the apostles. All the world and to every creature. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Where did he say just to the apostles? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. 
These signs shall follow in all the world as to every creature. Man standing back there, he's trying to bypass the thing. That's not a prophet. It's a prophet of a denomination, but not a prophet sent from God. He might be reflecting some denomination, some theory, some school, some ethics, but I'm talking about God and His Word. Scriptural, you're my thunder. Scriptural sign, scriptural voice behind the sign. Jonah, the prophet, was a sign. His sign was when he spit the whale, spit him out upon the bank. That was a sign. Them people were heathens, fish for a living. And they seen the whale god come in, the god of the sea, and take the prophet and spit him out upon the bank to give the message. And down the bank that he went, there was a sign. Now the voice was repent or perish. Before God struck that nation to tear it to pieces and sink it beneath the sea, he sent a prophet with his word. He gave a sign, a supernatural sign. Remember that sign even last to this day. Jesus referred to it. He said, as the prophet Jonas was in the belly of the whale for three days and nights, so must the Son of Man be. A wicked and adultery generation seeks after signs and they'll get it. The sign of the resurrection. If we ever was in a wicked and adultery generation, it's now. If Jesus said it would be as it was the days of Sodom, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Then we're in a wicked and an adultery generation. And they're going to get the sign of the resurrected Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said so. That's right. Jonah, come forth. He was a prophet. The Lord sent him. He tried to bypass it like Moses. You can't bypass the issue. Many men will want to pat you on the back and say, come into our group, come into our group. There's no group. God's the only one you're under. Come to us. He bypassed. He went and started to Tarshish. God put him in a wheel and sent him right back. And he went in there and that was a sign. And the voice of the sign was to repent or perish. They followed the voice because they believed the sign and they didn't perish. That's the only way it was because they believed the sign and heard the voice. That's the only way that the members of the churches of this day will fail to go into the judgment is when they believe the sign and hear the voice of God. The voice was repent or perish. Noah, the prophet, before God destroyed the Antilopian world, Noah was the prophet. The prophet was a sign what? That judgment was at hand. Noah is building his sign up to them, the ark that he's putting forth. Preaching the gospel. God's voice spoke down and the world was destroyed. John, a prophet, after 400 years with no prophet, the longest of the time that Israel ever went without a prophet. What was God doing? Why did he let him go 400 years? He wanted the prophet to be so, um, uh, um, so outstanding to the people that they would... Understand and take heed to what the man said. He was prophesied of coming. They said in Malachi 3, Behold, I send my messenger before my face to prepare the way. And they hadn't had a prophet for 400 years. And here come the prophet John on the scene. His appearing was a sign. Sign what? That the Messiah's coming was at hand. He was drawing the attention to Israel. You know it's promised to come again in the last day? Right. Gather the people again and attract their attention, their hearts back to the fathers. The beginning. Take all these here creeds and things and get rid of it and go back to what the Bible said. Back to the faith of the fathers. Vindicating God promised to do. Notice, now his appearing was a sign. That the Messiah was at hand 400 years. And did they receive him? They didn't believe him. Certainly they didn't. They had nothing to do with that because his preaching was contrary. They didn't believe what he was saying. Yet he was a sign because the people knew he was a prophet. They know something that's fixing to happen. See, every time for happening, now we 
I bypassed two or three pages here a few minutes ago of different prophets just to show you that uh, you understand before anything happens, God comes with a prophet to vindicate his word. And that coming of a prophet is a sign. Now, John was a sign because he was a prophet that Messiah was at hand. Now we find John, the sign of the uh, other, uh, of, uh, Jesus coming. We know that when God speaks and says these things, it's got to happen. You believe that? Yeah. Now, the sign of preparation, John was. He was to be a sign of preparation. Do you believe that he was a sign of preparation? Amen. Well, then, if he come then in a sign of preparation, he's coming again in the sign of preparation. Notice, his message was and his nature was exactly like what spirit he was anointed with. He was like Elijah. Jesus said, why does the scribe say Elias must first come? He said, he's already come. And you did to him what was listed. See? So must the Son of Man suffer under their hands, because all the scriptures got to be fulfilled. Watch John. Look what John did. John was a outstanding man come up from nowhere. So was Elijah. Both of them was lovers of the wilderness. And remember, both of them took a rapid painted face women, immoral women, and their natures was the same, exactly like Elijah, so were John, and they both kind of took the same route that one took with the other. But John was the one who announced and introduced the Messiah. Notice he introduced the Messiah, rebuking immoral women. Look at today, what we call the prophets of the churches today. And then call themselves of God. Some of these modern Ahab prophets with their little painted face, short haired, short wearing Jezebels leading them around wherever they want to go. Amen. Right. Then call themselves doctors and so forth of the Bible. Right. How can it be? Amen. Amen. They're Ahabs. Yes. Doctrine of the creeds. Afraid to get off of it, afraid to be put out of their denomination or something? Let me tell you, it's about that time when God always raises up something on the scene to condemn it. Amen. He did it in the days of Ahab. He did it in the days of John. He promised to do it again in the last days and he'll do it. Yeah. It is such a time that we're promised of this, at that time that we are going to see in Malachi 4 fulfilled. Exactly what he said it. A sign of the coming judgment, burning fire that will destroy all the unbelief and the righteous will walk out upon the ashes of the wicked. The promise is prophesied. It's thus saith the Lord. It's got to be. Amen. What's his voice going to do when this man comes on the scene? It's going to be revealing Jesus Christ's promised word. That's exactly the only thing it can be. For the Bible said in Hebrews 13, 8, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right. He also said in Luke 17, 30, In the back it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man, when the Son of Man will be revealed. The Son of Man is prophesied to be revealed, and what kind of a revelation will it be? It will be the revelation of His Living after being crucified for 1,900 years and is raised from the dead and is alive with us. He will be revealed because it's exactly the same thing that they did at Sodom and has got to return again. You can interpret it any way you wish to, but there it is. It's just the fact that it interprets itself. The Word don't need any interpretation when it's doing it itself. Revealing Christ in the promise of the age. That's exactly what will come on the scene. Paul, he had a sign. Let's watch him. You believe Paul was a prophet? He certainly was. Now notice, Paul came on the scene and saw a sign. What kind of a sign did he see? A pillar of fire. On his road to Damascus being a Jew. Jesus had been died, crucified, rose, ascended into heaven. And Paul was on his road down to Damascus. When a great light struck him down, and he cried, Lord, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus. And he was told that he was called to be a chosen vessel. 
a chosen vessel. Now notice, what did Paul have the rest of them didn't have? He had the abundance of the revelation of the Word of God. Because it was Paul who recognized that Jesus of the New Testament was Jehovah of the Old. Hallelujah! He had the revelation of it. He wrote it and revealed it because God permitted it to be added to the Bible. And the Word comes only by the Bible, by the prophets. And so then God revealed to Paul and he wrote the letters inspired and God put them in the Bible. Oh my, reveal that he is Christ of the Old Testament. Because he met him, he couldn't understand how that pillar of fire was. That was the one that led his people out of Egypt. That was the one that did with the Hebrews all through the age. And here he is. He seen him and said, Lord, what is it you want with me? He said, I am Jesus. He seen that this one that had led his people that he knowed all the time that Moses met the I am ever present, same yesterday, today, and forever, was manifested in the flesh. It was his revelation. He had it above any the rest of them. He was... And he had it so great until it except he get exalted above the abundance of the revelation that was given to him. Oh my! What did he do? His revelation then was prophecy for today. It was the voice coming forth wrote in the Bible to be vindicated today again. Hallelujah! Amen. It's the voice being vindicated Again, what he wrote because he was God's prophet, revealing the sign was speaking of something. And we notice now that Jesus, when he came on the scene, notice he was a prophesied word. He had a ministry to fulfill. You believe that? Sure he had a ministry. Notice to be fulfilled. What was written of him? He said that to the night as I spoke to Cleopas. Now, old fools and slow of heart to believe the word of God. Don't you know that Christ should suffer these things? Didn't all the prophets speak that he should do this? And then enter into his glory? He has to fulfill everything that he come. He come to heal that it might be fulfilled. He did this that it might be fulfilled. Everything he done was to be fulfilling because he had to be the voice of that scripture. But before he done it, he went forth with a healing ministry. Healing the sick. Everybody wanted to see the signs, sure. They believed the healing. But the voice changed it. One day when he said, I and the Father are one, that, that was too much for him. Amen. You make yourself God being a man. Yes. When the, the sign, they believed it. But when they had a voice behind it, a ministry that followed that sign, Amen. they didn't get it. Right. That's what trouble set in. Remember, he chose twelve. He said he chose them before the foundation of the world. He said, I chose twelve and one of them is the devil. Paul had to take that place to be the chosen one. Notice, and when he did one day, he began to speak to the people. And he said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, there's no life. What would doctors say about that? Now, he never explained it. He never said it. He just come for so many. Then that he foreknew, he come. He said, no man can come to me except my Father draws him. And all the Father has given me, they will understand it. They'll come. They'll come. They'll understand it. The one the Father has given me, whose name's on the book of life. He come to redeem them. Now we notice that in, that in that great hour, he said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, drink his blood. Could you imagine what people thought? Is that man out of his mind? Does he want us all to turn cannibal? And now perhaps he'll go out somewhere and kill himself and we're supposed to eat his flesh and drink his blood? See, they never understood it. He told Nicodemus, said, if I tell you earthly things that you don't understand, how are you going to understand heavenly things if I tell you? So we find out they didn't understand it. So the congregation dwindled away. So then he said again, when you see the Son of Man ascending up from whence he came, then the 70 ministers, the whole association said, what is the matter with this man? The Son of Man ascending up and here we eat with him, sleep with him, fish with him, out in the mountains with him, lay out on the deserts with him, around the creek banks with him, and then he both seen the cradle he was robbed in, talked to his mother. 
No, Joseph is supposed to be his father. We know all these things. Then he said, the son of man is going up from whence he come. Oh, how can that be? See, but he was the word. They failed to see that he was the word. As I quoted the other day, one of the most outstanding scriptures. That when Jesus, at 12 years old, when they left him at the Feast of Pentecost, was gone three days and couldn't find him. They come back. Mary had strictly testified that, that the Holy Ghost overshadowed her and brought that child. But when she found him in the temple disputing with them lawyers, what did she say? She said, Thy father and I have sought thee with tears. What did she do? She condemned her own testimony, yeah. calling Joseph his father. Yeah. Now, if she's the mother of God, what about that? Yeah. What's the word always is corrected. That little 12-year-old boy, never a day in school as we know of, just a child, he never knew what he said it perhaps. But watch what he said, know ye not that I must be about my father's business? Amen. He's the word today, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Know ye not, if he'd been about Joseph's business, he'd been making carpenter business. But he's about the Father, Heavenly Father's been out there busting up my organizations they had up there and all that scribbled it. He was tearing it to pieces and they was astonished the little boy like that knows that. It was God speaking to him because he was the Word for that day. Notice how perfect that is. Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His revelation, we find out, is the same. He, he started healing and when he did, everything was fine. But then... When he begins to, is the voice begins to speak. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man. Well, they, the congregation walked away. Oh, that fellow, we don't want to hear him no more. That fellow's out of his mind. They forgot all that he had done. The manifestation. They didn't read the Bible to see the hour they were living. Sure, he was an odd person. God does it that way. They say odd things. Why couldn't, why couldn't Micah agree with the rest of them? Israelite prophets down there before Jehoshaphat and them. Yeah. Why couldn't? He had the word of the Lord. He had to say, he said, I always say what God said. Yeah. And they had scriptural authority to show that they were right. Yeah. But not all the scripture. Jesus said it's also written. See? Yeah. They didn't understand. I'll watch this. We're closing now. We're, we're getting late. Yes, I'm sorry. I went too long. I'll hurry right quick now for the prayer line. Just a few more words I want to say here. Notice. The prophet comes. When he does, he shows a sign. And then there's a voice in that sign that speaks. A voice that speaks. A scriptural voice that has to be according to the Bible, reflecting the word for that hour. It's always been that way. It always will be that way. Because God cannot change. Now notice, Jesus' first ministry, all they all, everybody wanted him in their church. Oh my, he's a great fellow. Sure Went in all the synagogues, read the scrolls and sit down, everybody, the young rabbi. But one day, he began to talk to him in another way. The voice of the sign began to speak. And when the voice of the sign began to speak, nobody wanted him. One of them said, this man's crazy, he's a cannibal. Trying to make cannibal out of all of us, see? He never explained it, let him go. The next come along, we find out that the 70, the ministerial association he had with him, when they come, well, how can this man be ascending up? How? Who is he? Why, here he's making himself be good God. That's a hard thing. And they went away from him. Then he turned to the disciples and he said, you want to go too? They couldn't go. They had seen something. They know the scripture and they know that was it. They couldn't explain what he was talking about, but yet they believed it anyhow. They never asked no questions. It never bothered them. They believed because it was the vindication of the Scripture. You believe that? Peter said, Lord, where would we go? You alone has the words of eternal life. They seen it. They know that he, he who he was. That's what he's supposed to do. No matter, we can't explain it. See, they were ordained to life before the foundation of the world. When that light struck it, they knew it. There's nothing going to move them from it. No matter, look like the Pharisees had intended one side and the other. Didn't bother them disciples. They went right straight on anyhow. Because they believed it. His voice spoke then. Now, I might say this. His voice will speak one day. A sign will come. And what will it do? 
The lady of sin sign must be the same as it was then. There'll be a voice speak to us in the last days. And remember, lady or sea is signed. Jesus is the same yesterday, day, and forever. And when he was put out of the church there, in the lady of sea age, we find out he's put out again. On the outside. Look, the voice. If any man will cooperate, if anybody will let me in, I'll come and step with them, and they with me. I'll come in, and, and I'll be in them. Standing on the outside of the rank of church aid, knocking, trying to get in. If any man will open the door and just cooperate with me a little bit, I'll come in and sup with them. I'll make myself known to them. Yeah. If I can just get in like I did on the road to Emmaus that night in Emmaus, if I can just get in, I'll make myself known to them. Now the Bible said that's the way it would be. Yeah. And that's the way it is. Amen. Christ, sup, reveal myself. To them. I will reveal that I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Son of Man will be revealed in that day when all church entity and everything will become Sodom and like that. I'll be on the outside, but I'll be knocking, trying to get in. Now again, if you can believe the, the true manifestation of this hour that we're living, I won't have time to go on through this, but if you can't get it and can see now the true manifestation that God Shows a sign, and the sign has a scriptural voice. You understand? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, just a word from you now. A vindication that is true. Heavenly Father, we realize what would be our end if we be found false witness of you. Where would I go to, Lord? What would happen to me? Where would my end be if I be found false witness or have built the house upon stubbles or sinking sand? God, help us, real believers, if we have to stand alone. Stand on the Word. We see your sign, Lord. We see that something's fixing to happen. We know that the end time is here. We know it's promised for us. Now, may we not fail to see it. Come, Lord Jesus. You are the same. You are Jesus tonight. When you can get somebody just to invite you in, if you can come in, then you'll make yourself known to them. Friends, I pray tonight. Through Jesus' name, amen. I'm just a little late, friends. I'm going to be about 10 or 15 minutes. We got, I'm going to call some prayer. I never noticed my watch. I have a watch that I've got in Switzerland to give to me. I wind it up in an alarm, but it, uh, the alarm is, I haven't got it with me this time. I forgot to bring it. Now, it confuses me sometimes. I spoke too long. Forgive me. I'll maybe make it up, maybe tomorrow night. <laughs> what prayer cards? What prayer cards did he give? Huh? E? 100? Where do we call from the last time? Anybody remember? One, starting from one then to 50 or 25 or somewhere with 50. Now, let's call from 75 then tonight. We call from 1, 25, and 50. Now let's call from 75. E75. Who has a prayer card? Raise up your hand. Prayer card E75. Raise up your hand. Look around on yours. You mean it isn't here? Then we start from somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, E75. All right, come over here, lady, right here. 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. Let those five stand. One, two, three, four. We like one person. One, two, three, four. Here is five. All right? All right? Uh, 80 to 85 stand in E. 80 to 85. Now remember, each one of you in the car is going to be called. Just don't worry. Forget it. 80 to 85. All right? 85 to 90. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. E, 85 to 90. 85. 86. 87. 88, 89, 90. 90 to 100. And he's let them stand. Come over on this side. Brother Roy, help the count and see if you're there. Just a minute. Well, now look, some of you here don't have prayer cards. Yet you're sick. You want God's healing power. God's healing blessing. If that's so, raise up your hand. Say, I want God to heal me. 
Or if you will, go down there, Brother Roy, and help him real quick, if you will, because we're running late. Get down and help him, if you will, real quick. And yeah, he wants to stay with the same. Yeah, he said that. See, here comes one now that wouldn't come. See, um, you'd be surprised how it is overseas. Maybe like one time in Africa, I had 15 interpreters standing there before about 200,000 people. And I'd say, Jesus Christ is Son of God. And he'd go all down this line and way down that line to ever try. And then you come back and have to think what she was saying. And this different, oh my. But I've seen 30,000 blanket natives give their heart to Jesus Christ. Breaking their idols on the ground like a death storm. Uh, All right. Is there someone missing out or something? Yeah, make sure. sure. That's fine, brother. Say, Jerry, you know Brother Espinosa? No, I don't. Uh, is here. Anybody know Brother Espinosa? Uh, he was once with me over in Mexico City when that little baby was raised in the day of this time. <laughs> I just thought he loved it. You've heard the story of it, of course, it's in the businessman's voice and things. But I was just, I want to go down there again. I, I, such humble people, and they really believed they were. You see, the church down there is always promising something, they never get to it. But here, in the Bible promise, we're at it, it's to us, we, we, we see it. And that makes it real. All right. Now, uh, now, each one of you, give me your undivided attention for at least ten minutes. Maybe I'll call too many. I don't know. I, I might have done wrong. All right. They kind of got them turned around there. Or just let them go on over into the line. They just as they are like that. Let's just, let's just begin to start the ground. You know. Get them a seat so they can sit down there for the or something. You know. I want to see uh, people watching. See, there's one thing you can't do. You can't have a disturbance. The Holy Spirit is timid. How many know that? And you must be obedient during the time. How many have been in the meeting and see things go from one to another? Sure you have. Them lose their mind, go crazy, and the seats fly around and around the building and devils is cast out. Some of them paralyzed and had to be packed out of the building, still paralyzed, too. Some of them died right there, right where they're standing, and dropped dead in the back and forth. We're not playing church. It's the Holy Spirit. We believe. A man standing one time trying to hypnotize me. They're in Canada. Is that across from Detroit? What is that city up there? Yeah, no, across from Detroit. Windsor. Windsor. Yeah, they come over there that hard and go hypnotize people for the army, you know, make them bark like dogs and things like that. And that guy sitting out there, I kept feeling an odd spirit. And I noticed it, and the Holy Spirit said, oh, said, Son of the devil, why did he put that in your heart to come here? Because you did that, they'll pack you out of here. He's still paralyzed. That's been about 12 years ago. They packed him out. Yeah. God, still God. <laughs> Same as I Same never change. If we can only believe, that's all we have to do is have faith. Now you look this way and believe. Now, if the Holy Spirit will tonight, I don't know that He will, but if He will come, now what kind of a sign are we looking for today? The resurrection of Christ. Yes. The proof that Jesus is alive among us. Is that right? Everybody remember? Don't the Bible now have we got the sign of Solomon in the world today? Is that right? Got the sign of Noah in the world today. Is that right? Got all these other things. Now what did he say would take place in that time? The Son of Man would be revealed in that day. Is that right? What is revealed is made known. Anything that's made known is revealed. The Son of Man will be made known in that day. Well, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, would he do the same thing and make himself known? How many believe that? Now... Have you got your, uh, everybody straightened out now, now, now? Now, friends, I don't know if we get to all of them. I want you all just to watch real close. Be reverent, pray, believe. Now, please, see, especially if something happens to get away from you. Don't ever want to jump up and go to, see, yeah, about two months ago in my church, one Sunday morning, there's something, uh, 
Satan doing something to attract the attention of people. There was an Englishman there by the name of Wayne. He lives at my, you want his address, we can have you arrive. He sent tapes of this meeting from overseas. And the man resented what I said horribly. I looked down and I seen a horrible spirit upon him. I had him on private interview. Told him, I said, Mr. Way, you have heart trouble. He even resented that. I said, what'd you come to me for? So about a month after that, he went to the doctor. The doctor said, you got a very bad heart. So he comes to the meeting that morning, and something was said, real hot-headed Englishman, you know. He resented that his wife, a wonderful Norwegian woman, a nurse, and is sitting there with him. And I said something, and he resented it right quick, you know. And when he did, this, he's standing to the feet, they were singing. And when he did, his head went back, his eyes just flipped right straight back, his face turned real dark red like that death stare, he fell dead in the floor. Well, there was church went to going on, people screaming, and I said, sit down, you're trained better than that. You're trained better than that. And so his wife got down, tested his heart, he was gone. She began screaming, I said, sister, wait just a minute so I can get out of trouble here. We don't know what the problem is. And there I went down there, he just stiff. His eyes wasn't cut on, his eyes were sticking right out like that. In fact, I couldn't feel him more hard than I could feel him that. She said, oh, began to scream, she began, I said, oh, we don't know what the Heavenly Father is going to do. And I said, maybe he did it for a purpose. I said, Brother Way was resenting, he said, he whispered to me that he was resenting what you said. And I said, he oughtn't to have done that. I said, Heavenly Father, forgive Brother Way for his error. And I call for his spirit to return. He said, Brother Brandon, there he was alive again, standing in the moment. Hallelujah. Don't get, if anything gets away, just keep quiet. Keep quiet. You see, it happens to many times. But the church gets all tore up. Then you see, you breathe the Holy Spirit. Now, if you want to praise God for something, that's good. But when everybody jumping and watching this and that, and people getting up, walking around, talking to one another, it, it just confusing you. Jesus couldn't even heal the people that way himself. Is that right? right? When he was here, he led them outside the city like that. Put his hands on and prayed for them. Now, now this lady stands here. She's a woman younger than I am. She looks healthy and strong. I don't know. Now see, the church of yesterday, God's vindication sign, lay hands upon her, pray for her, let her go see if she has faith to be healed. That's the way God did it. But he promised something else. Now. See, the word of promise for today. I'm sure you understand what I mean. Now, I'm getting transposition here somewhere. So I think this is better. Now, if this lady, I don't know her, but the Holy Ghost tells me, I hear it's exactly a Bible picture, panoramic, if you're ever over there, the sign of that well still there, and by his birth on the top, Jesus met a woman. And he told her what her trouble was, and she knew that was the sign of the hour that the Messiah was there. Is that right? She knew, she knew it. Well, if he's the same today and promised to redeem himself the same, then it has to be his sign again. Now, I hope everybody understands this. I'm not meaning that's me, or I'm not meaning it's my brothers here, or some man out there. I mean it's Jesus. Amen. It's Christ, not the anointed. See? See? He died that he might cause his ministry to be carried on by his church that recognizes his word. I don't mean it's made anything different to me than it does one of these men here. It's not a bit or one out there. We're all sinners. Saved by grace, but it's his promise. He promised to do it. That's the reason I stand here now, because he promised it. And he said, go do it. So that's there's no fear. Now, lady, I want you to look at me this moment, teaching and preaching. Usually when I had my most successful meeting in the sermon and so forth, this one used to be the manager and preach. Mr. Baxter and then and preach a while. I didn't have to walk out on the platform, come right out of the room from somewhere free, walk right out. They already had a prayer line lined up. I just went right in. But now, you have to swing yourself back around. Preaching is a gift. It's our inspired preaching. And the gift, some are apostles, some prophets, some teachers, some pastors, some evangelists. That's the gift that's in the church. But it's possible we can have more than one, like Paul or any of those. Now, if, as long as there's an apostle, there's got to be a prophet. As long as there's a prophet, there's got to be an, an evangelist. Why is it ministry to say there is a pastor and an evangelist, but there's no prophet? 
That's picking what you want to make it say something that it doesn't. But God is his own interpreter of his word. He says for the trial. Now, if the Holy Spirit will reveal to me something you've done, or who you are, or whatever I need, I don't know. See. It's just like a dream. You see something, it just goes back. And whatever I say, what I see, I say. See? And then, that's a sign. See? And there's the voice of the sign. The sign is to do it. The voice is what it says. Then if that's true, and that's all true, then what I'm preaching here on this word got to be true, because that's the credential of the calling. Now, hasn't that been proved by the Bible? Now, the audience believe that with all your heart? Now, this is what it says. Now, I don't know the woman. Here's my hand up, here's the word of God, and here's the minister that See, I don't know the woman. I've never seen her in my life as I know, and we're strangers one to another. I have no way of knowing. If that's right, so the people know, raise up their hands on these people. Now, can we like those people that sign up? Now look on me. I mean, like, I can't John pass through the gate so beautiful enough. See, Jesus attracted her attention. See, he knew he had to go up there. The Father sent him up there, but he didn't know the woman come out. He thought that would be it. See? And then he talked to her until he found out what her trouble was when he told her. That's what I'm doing right now. It's me getting myself out of the way so he can talk. Now, yes, I can tell you what's wrong with a woman by the grace of God. Her trouble is she has tumors, and those tumors are in the bowels. Is that correct? You believe that he will heal that and make it well? You, you believe it? Got somebody else you're praying for, too, have you? You believe he'll heal his eyes and make it well, your little boy? They're just taking that one thing to break it down. See? All right. Go ahead, Bob. She didn't catch it at first because she's holding that on her mind. I see a light kept flashing back over again like that because she was praying for something else and whatever it was, there it was. See, if you just believe all right, if you could explain it. Now that ought to make every person in here. Just that one person ought to make every person in here believe right now. Is that right? How do you do now we are strangers one another to another before. We are strangers. I have no idea about you, who you are, where you come from, or, or anything about you. But God knows about you. Now he will reveal to me what your trouble is. Will you believe me to be his servant? Now, now be just as quietly as you can. Now, yes. You're, you're suffering with a high blood pressure. That's right. It's caused from the nervous condition that makes your blood go high. And then you get wore out of that many times. Very good person. I mean, see, not a hitchhiker. She believes. She really believes. And I, I'm thankful for that. That's and say, by the way, man, you're such a nice person. You have a really sick family. Your husband's sick too. He has high blood pressure too. He also has heart trouble. You've got a son, and he's got heart trouble. And then you got one that you're worried about. There's something dark, the boy is shattered, he's a drinker. He's alcohol and drinking. Is that right? Isn't that right? I'm bleeding now. I think it'll be alright. Yes, thou can believe. All things are possible to them that believe. If, if you can believe that what God said is the truth, that settles it. Don't you think that's right? Is that the truth? Is not what He said? He made the promise. So if He makes the promise, that settles it. He said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Now you think that people have to, to have that. They don't, they don't have to be standing on the platform. To, they, don't, they don't have to be there. Not at all. She's just having a wonderful time out there. What about you out in the audience? Do you believe with all your heart? Every one of you? 
This lady sitting right here looking at me, right there, she suffers with heart trouble, with brown dress on, dark hair, wearing glasses. You have heart trouble. As soon as it's mentioned about the lady there, something struck upon you. That's right. Now, you're way away from me, but you touched something, didn't you? You believe now with all your heart? If you raise up your hand, if that's true. All right. Now, would you do me a favor? That lady sitting next to you has got her hand up there. She's suffering with a high blood pressure. And if she'll believe with all her heart, it'll leave her too. That's right, raise up your hand. Now, tell me what they touched. What they touched. You believe God heals heart trouble sitting there for you too? You believe he healed your heart? You would if you let him. He has done it if you just believe it. But first, you've got to believe it. You must believe it. You're obligated to believe it because that's the only way that God can heal. You believe that with all your heart? This lady sitting here with the dark looking dress on, something wrong with her neck. Do you believe that God will make it well, lady? See? See, you don't have to be up here on the platform. Now look, just as soon as that light left her, it went right back. A lady started crying, sitting right behind her. A lady right behind her started weeping. What was it? She had a real strange feeling come over. If that's right, lady right behind her, raise up, raise up your hand. That's right. Real strange feeling. Come over. Now you read that did that because he wants to heal you from that stomach trouble to make you well. Do you believe he will? Amen. If you just believe. Just believe. That man sitting out there looking at me so curious with the rheumatism sitting out there on the end of the seat out there. You believe that God will heal you with the rheumatism and make you well? If you believe it, God will make you well. If you can believe it. Don't you see that he's just the same yesterday, today, and forever? Can't you believe that with all this? What if I didn't say nothing to you? You know I don't want you What if I didn't say nothing and just let you go on through? Would you believe it with all your heart? I believe you got you standing right there. So let's go believe it. You believe that God heals you and can heal your dad too and make both of you well? You think you come out of the hospital with that heart trouble? Do you believe it? See? If you just only believe it. That's all you have to do. Amen. Don't you see it's him? How do you do it? Look at me just a minute. You have weaknesses. That's right. Your mother's sick too here, isn't she? She has heart trouble. You believe that God will heal your mother of the heart trouble? Say it, by the way, just a minute. Your husband gets healed that stomach trouble, too. Say it, just a moment. Your daughter has something wrong with her throat. You believe he heals that also? Yeah. Your grandchild has fainting spells like passing out a little baby.